Hey, how you doing today? I am Tequila Coleman. In today's video, we're going to talk about evidence. I want to um, explain in, in detail what evidence is, you know, what are some of the things you could be looking for that um, can communicate, you know, evidence to you and your God ordained love story, okay? So Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, it say, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So evidence are those things you don't see yet. So right now, when you take a look at your God ordained love story, you don't see your God ordained spouse choosing you. You don't see them identifying you as their husband or wife. You see more of your prodigal spouse rejecting you off with the counterfeit, right? You don't see, um, you know, the happiness, right? You don't see the support coming from your God ordained prodigal spouse. You see the opposite. You see the running man spirit. You see uh, that abandonment. You see how they are unsupportive, may even be criticizing, um, criti critical of you, right? So understand, you know, um, what this scripture is saying. It say, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith is shown up in your prayers, right? It takes faith in order, for, order to move you into praying regarding this situation, right? So God is telling us, according to your prayers, He's moving, right? God is moving according to your prayers, okay? So when we talk about evidence, all throughout your God-ordained love story, God is going to be showing you evidence. And the reason why God is showing you evidence is because he want to keep you in a state of hoping, hope, believing, you know, trusting in God, right? Because God understands if he doesn't show you what he is doing and he just have you standing and believing, right? He understand as human beings, we are going to focus on the appearance of things. And when we focus on the appearance of things, when we look at our prodigal spouses off with the counterfeit, that causes you to feel hopeless. It causes, it creates a broken heart. You feel depressed. You feel defeated, right? You begin to give up on God. You say, God can't do it. When it comes down to this prodigal that I'm dealing with, it's impossible for God so God has to step in and he has to show us evidence, right? And so evidence can be shown in our dreams. Evidence are shown in visions and evidence can be shown, you know, in the physical, okay? And I'm gonna back this up in scripture, but God is showing you evidence because scriptures say hope deferred makes the heart sick. So he has to show us evidence to keep us going, to keep us believing, right? You know, for me, I get excited when I see evidence, right? It it increases my faith, you know, when God showed me evidence, okay? So let's take a look at um, in scripture, because I want to show you in scripture where God, you know, was showing evidence. You know, God showed, you know, um, them in a vision or a dream uh, of what is to come, and then he also fulfilled it, okay? Because this is what God is doing in these God ordained love stories. Okay, so evidence can be shown in vision. So let's take a look at uh, vision. Um, so let's go to Genesis chapter 15, starting, we're gonna read verses one through four. Genesis chapter 15, verses one through four. It says, After this, the word of the Lord came to came to Abram in a vision. Now, did you hear that? The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision so now god is speaking to abram in a vision it goes on to say do not be afraid abram i am your shield your very great reward but abram said oh sovereign lord what can you give me since i remain childless and the one who will inherit my estate um is Elazar, I think that's how you pronounce his name, of Damascus. And Abram said, you have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Now, this is taking place in a vision. This is an audible vision, okay? Then the word, verse 4, then the word of the Lord came to him, this man will not be your heir, but a son coming from your own body will be your heir. So God is telling him in a vision. First, God gave him a correction. He said, he said, this man would not be your heir. Then he gave him the promise. But a son coming from your own body will be your heir, right? Now, let's go over to Genesis 21. Read, we're going to read verses 1 through 3. 
Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah as he has said. And the Lord did for Sarah what he has promised. Let's stop right here, okay? This is a word for somebody. I want you to replace Sarah's name with your name. Now the Lord was gracious to Tequila as he has said. And the Lord did for Tequila what he has promised. Come on now, let's say it again. Now the Lord was gracious to Tequila as he has said. And the Lord did for Tequila what he had promised. Verse 2, Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abram, Abraham in his old age at the very time God had promised him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore him. So we see how God um, revealed to Abraham in a vision that a son will be born to him, okay? And then we see that promise come to pass. And God does this in our own lives, right? I'm not, I don't have visions a lot, I have a lot of dreams, but usually when God is giving us visions or a dream, um, he will show you what is to come. He will show you your spouse proposing to you. He will show you the wedding. He will show you and your spouse a happy family. He will show the future to you. Then it's just a matter of going throughout this process and waiting on God to fulfill this promise to us. Okay. So that was, a, those are those two scriptures I use for a vision. Okay. Because God give us evidence in our vision. Now let's take a look at the dream. Okay. Because God will also reveal evidence in our dream. So let's go over to Genesis chapter 37. Let's read verses five through nine. It says, Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheep rose and stood upright while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. Verse eight. His brother said to him, do you attend to ring over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. Verse 9. Then he had another dream and he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream. And this time the sun and moon and 11 stars were bowing down to me. So God is giving him a dream of what is to come. I'm not sure if Joseph, before before Genesis uh, 37, I'm not sure if, if Joseph was in his prayer closet praying and asking God, what is the purpose for my life? You know, what are you going to do in my life? Right? It don't tell us that. But what, it, what, but what we see here is God giving him a dream of what is to come. Now let's go to Genesis 45. And Genesis 45 basically talks about, uh, it picks up where Joseph makes himself known to his brothers. Right. And he goes on to tell them to not be distressed or angry, you know, with themselves for selling him there. Right. It say because it was to say live that God sent me ahead of you. So God made uh, Joseph uh, in charge. He made him head over Egypt. And he basically made he God basically made Joseph's brothers his footstool. He made his enemies his footstool. The very people that try to take Joseph's life, they had to come back to Joseph so that Joseph can save their life, okay? And so we see God fulfilling the dream, the promise, okay? Joseph just had to go through all of that up and down to get to the promise, okay? So going back to evidence, God give us evidence, okay, in our love story. He show us evidence of our prayers being answered. Let me just say this. I hope you are praying the scriptures over your God-ordained love story and over your prodigal spouse. One of the um one of the reasons why I have you all say create in my prodigal spouse a clean heart, renew a right spirit within him or her is because that is scripture. I'm being very strategic in prayer because I understand when I pray the scripture over the situation, God hear me, angels hearken to the word of God, and now they are moving according to this word of God. It gotta come. The word of God cannot return back to God void. It must go out and accomplish the very reason why I sent it. So my prodigal, when I pray this, has to come back with a clean heart and a right spirit. This is how it works. 
So I hope you are praying the word of God over your uh, love story and over your spouse and prayer over yourself. Okay. Um, but like I was saying, God give us these evidence so that we know he hear our prayers. He's moving according to our, uh, he's moving on our behalf. He want us to stay in a, a, a posture of hoping and believing and trusting in God because God already know if I don't show them evidence, they're going to get the thing on them, you know, doubt me. They're going to operate in unbelief. They're going to focus more on the appearance of things versus believing what I said. So I got to show them. And, and God show us, you know, what he's going to do. He show us evidence and vision in our dreams. And he will also send our prodigals back, you know, or allow us to cross paths with our prodigals. And they would tell us the correction out of their own mouth. Okay. And not correction, the evidence out of their own mouth. Okay. So evidence could be now these are some of the things you want to be looking for okay i just want to just give you a few things you know you could be looking for that communicate evidence evidence can be an apology your your god or name prodigal spouse come back apologizing when they never used to apologize that's evidence okay uh if if your prodigal was filled with anger and you've been praying against that spirit of anger. You've been rebuking it, buying it. You moved it to deliverance, calling it out. I command the spirit of anger to come out in the name of Jesus Christ. But now when, you, when you're interacting with your prodigal, they seem at peace. They seem calm. They seem content and happy. That is God showing you that spirit of anger has left your prodigal. Okay? Um, counterfeits being removed is another, you know, sign of evidence. Right. If you've been praying and I know you have, you know, God removed every counterfeit that tried to sit in my seat and you start seeing counterfeits being removed. You start seeing your prodigal ghosting counterfeits. You start, you know, seeing uh, let's say even the counterfeits start. Let's say they 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 start um, inboxing you messages, you know, trying to mess with your mind and make you make you think something differently concerning your spouse. All of that is communicating. God has broken up that counterfeit relationship okay and so that's evidence all right um whenever you begin to see the witchcraft um spells begin to wear off of your prodigal so let's say you know it was a love spell placed on your prodigal that caused your prodigal reject you like pull away from you and and draw closer to the counterfeit but now that the the uh the witchcraft spell the love spell is is wearing off now you see from a distance, you know, um, your prodigal is coming back in their right mind. You see your prodigal is now able to see things correctly, right? Um, you, you know, you can, you can see all these things, you know. Now they're taking a look at the whole entire situation. They're getting revelation. They're starting to see the counterfeit motive. This is evidence, Okay. If you have been praying for God to reveal hidden enemies that are surrounded around your prodigal, and let's say you heard from other people, your prodigal is no longer hanging with this group of individuals, or, um, you know, you just heard they're not around this person or a certain family, family members, they're not associating themselves with anymore, right? And, and if they were an enemy, again, that's God showing you evidence okay another um sign of evidence that can be easily overlooked because remember when um we talked about the nine stages that believing spouse would go through before you see this uh promise manifest you want to reach a point where god is going to flip the table he's going to flip the script on on uh, the enemy and he's going to begin to vindicate you okay so vindication is evidence from god so whenever your enemy are now nice to you that's evidence as evidence scriptures say when when uh a man please a, when a man's ways pleases god he makes his enemies um live at peace with him i think that's what it said don't quote me <laughs> it's something like that uh don't quote me on that but when your enemies you know become friendly or nice to you you already know you, you know this is evidence from god some of your exes from the past when they start coming back, calling you up, trying to rekindle things because now they see your value. 
Uh huh. This is evidence because you could have had a rejection um, curse or spirit on you, and God has broken it off of you. And now everyone who rejected you in the past is now able to see your value now, right? So this, you know, X is coming back from the past is evidence, okay? Um, another one is that running man spear stop your your prodigal spot. They start running. They like okay, you know what? They start owning up. They they start accepting accountability for their action. You know, they start you know um, moving into being responsible. That's evidence, okay? If your prodigal spouse, if you see any type of growth and development, you know, if your prodigal is growing in character, or if they have repented, giving their life back over to the Lord, um, and they reading their Bible more, that is evidence, okay? <laughs> evidence you know uh another one can be if your prodigal spouse is willing to talk about everything let's say they've been avoiding you all this time they've just been ignoring you avoiding you um you know just set on misunderstanding you but now they come back and they they, they want to talk about things you know because god has corrected them he has revealed some things to them and now they want to you know make things right that's evidence okay so these are just some of the signs, you know, you could begin to look for. Evidence is whatever you've been praying for and you see your prayers answered. That If I had to give evidence a definition, that's what it is. Evidence is when you see your prayers answered by God. And again, you will see this if your prodigal out of the blue contact you and start telling you God is dealing with me. You know, um, I see the error in my ways. You know, I acted foolishly. They apologize. They, you know, they're ready to talk about things. They're ready. They're ready. And evidence can also be, let's say in the beginning, they was out of their mouth. They were rejecting the marriage. They was telling you things like, I, I'm, I, I'm not, I'm not marrying you. I don't want this marriage. But now they are the ones bringing up marriage. They are the ones, you know, um, who is in agreement with it. That's another sign of evidence, okay? So I hope this brought a level of clarity to um, what is evidence, you know, and what are some of the things you want to be looking for. And remember, God show us evidence because he want to keep us, you know, um, in a state of hope, belief, you know, having faith in God, you know, uh, and just trusting. He want to show out in this uh, God ordained love story. God wants, he wants you to know that he will fight on your behalf. He wants you to know that he is a God of war. And every, every person, whoever come up against his chosen one, they will be coming up against God and they will be removed. They will bow. Okay. So that's what, you know, God is doing in this God ordained love story. He, he's showing us evidence. Um, you just got to know what to look for. And when you see evidence, that's not your time to stop praying. You want to continue to pray until you and your spouse come into, you know, agreement to this marriage. Okay. And you still don't stop then, you know, you just continue to pray, but you now is praying new prayers. Okay. Over the, um, over the marriage. All right. So that is it. I am Tequila Coleman. I'll talk to you all real soon. Take care.